Let's go. I know. Boy, that was a tactical decision coming out by production. They were like, they have nothing left to talk about. Let's just send it Get over to screen. them right now. L Get them look at screen. them. They're, even Poro is coming in, trying to take away your Gaxi from you. And uh, I don't I mean, uh, I don't look, approve. all that says to me is that Poro really doesn't embrace the law of PUBG esports. And, and that's true. just a shame, it's true. to be honest with you. You, mm -hmm. you really hate to see that. Um, when somebody won't embrace you know, the real heritage that comes with this esport. Well, we are getting everything set for it. game number two. We hopefully will have a couple of memorable moments coming inside of this one as we're going to be, that plane's going to be up over Lippo and going right over the canal. We said the fact that we wanted an interesting circle, Puck, and I think that this might give us a chance for it. Any any Oath fans in chat? Um, it's, uh, I mean, it, this would be a great time to be an Oath fan if they were in the lobby, to be honest, because I can't help but feel this is going to be a wacky one. And I'm feeling I'm like it's going to be Southeast. <laughs> I'm getting like Challengers vibe coming in off of this one where we're going to have like, I don't know, seven teams decide to go back over towards military base. You know, I just want it to be peak Challengers. that it can Well, be. this this is the thing because we saw a lot of uh, a lot of congestion over to the east side, right, on the previous plane path. And that yeah. was a lot of teams stretching down. I mean, we saw that early game kind of uh, <clears throat> with uh, Jay all day and uh that's something to consider with this plane as well, because there's going to be another three, four potentially teams in that mix here. Um, again, a lot of a lot of the map unattainable uh, from just stretching here. So look out for any audible drops, any reactionary drops just based off the plane path. Again, teams like Cozy, Clueless, they're going to get down to where they want to go. But um, I always go towards, you know, play for fun, which we know drop a, a lot further over to the west side here. Well, let's see if we have any fun commitments coming through. Doesn't look like a whole bunch opting back over towards military. Well, I take that back. Looks like we're at least going to get maybe three to four, depending on where these last couple of drops come through. As it looks like Liberate and Pros Don't Snake are waiting until the very last second. Might be kind Ooh. of buying back over next to Primorsk. Yeah, and actually Liberate making a mad dash towards Primorsk as well. Um, Keck W yeah. kind of coming down on, uh, obviously, over the west bridge here and again these are all factors now if we do see a military island circle pop again with how much presence there is on the south coast here it's going to be a bloodbath come rotation time i'm just hoping that we get something to pop off over next to primoris but it doesn't look like we're going to it looks like pros don't stake gonna go ahead and continue to long drop back over territory is pretty confirmed and look at that paying off for patience dropping at the last wow. second going over towards primoris is going to reward you big all those fools that jumped early like Ascendants and no cap and look at all of them all the way on the other side of the island. Circle pops all the way to the west. I mean, it, it's it not necessarily the worst thing because if they can read this circle correctly, obviously with the plane path, they're going to know they're going to have a fantastic opportunity. They're first out of the plane. They can wrap into the north side. Now, it does depend on where a lot of these other teams go, which is a big unknown, especially if people haven't dropped into necessarily their, their comfort zone, their, their home, so to say. Um, it's always harder to read teams in, in terms of uh, the circle being a bit wacky and the plane path not really setting things up. But, I mean, Virtue now are in a good position because Elpix and, and obviously Monkey Business have to cross a bridge, uh, depending on where it is, unless we see somebody make a, a play for the boat on the south side, Matt, which I highly doubt. I don't like there's a lot that could be happening in here, you know, like, OK, just before chat goes crazy. Yes, I was making a joke about the people jumping early. You have no idea where the circle's going, guys. So with this, we're going to see a lot of the area like uh, up next to Everest is going to be pretty wide open and uncontested. And you have to assume that I think a couple of our teams might be opting to make mad dashes along that point. Corey getting a little bit of attention over here from pros don't snake as we saw them make their adjustment away from Primorsk just a little while ago. Keck W is also in a very interesting spot. They're running. I guess it's a two one one looting strategy. But it's the really not, just kind of everybody split. individualized. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a pretty separated looting strategy that they've got going on. They could regroup and do the bridge camping like you were talking about a second ago. Or they could try to go grab the foothills just to the north of Ferry Pier, which are very, yeah. very popular. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to be honest, they're in a better position now. Uh, with that circle pop, they should know how much that circle is open. Um, yeah. And really, I want to see them kind of scout out some good compounds, maybe take a... a not necessarily a wide split. Don't spread too thin, but maybe take control of, you know, something towards God compound, maybe something north of that towards observatory. What are those kind of priority areas in circle one? 
So just so everybody's aware, okay, we had a circle that was next to Yasnaya, had a whole bunch of fields. Well, guess what? <laughs> Game number two, we're, we're going to have a whole up. bunch of, we're going to switch <laughs> it up. We're going to give you a whole bunch of Gatka fields this time, because, you know, we're feeling a little bit frisky. That being said, Quarry being pretty centered, and there is a lot of water inside the circle, could yeah, yeah. make for some interesting circle shifts here in just a little while. I mean, there is the most mathematically probable situation where the area around Gatka chopsticks, you know, just to the west of that, most likely going to be the high contested territory, highest chance for where we could potentially see circles kind of ending out also around quarry, but you never know. Maybe we'll get something a little bit more frisky. Well, again, I, I like to operate on that basis, but I want to see a hard South shift here. So that the water is still a factor. I do too. I, mm. I, I want some spice mm. coming into my life. Looks like uh, just to give you guys an update and seeing how smart we are, I think that Keck W is regrouping across those hills. So long distance high five, high epoch. We call that one coming a mile away. Also, we do have one team that's starting to stretch its legs over across the bridge, but Keck W has already made its reposition, so it should be pretty fine. Ryan's going to be coming up over to next to the north. Looks like they're going to be eyeing back over towards that Gatka terrain, but there is a team that is running a very wide split along this location. I... I can't tell if they're still looting or if they're actually holding this to see if maybe they can get a couple of shots of people as they rotate through. Camborghini, don't worry. It should flip over just fine. Yeah, no, nobody was watching, don't worry. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I swear <laughs> there's like a thing that happens. Like the physics just go crazier whenever we start spectating. No, Prim, Prim presses a button. As soon as the observer comes onto a car, she presses a button, the car flips. It's a well-known fact. It's just got the suspension. <laughs> like back tires just kind of pop and flip it over. So this point forward, it's no longer Frost, guys. It's never Frost's fault. It's always Primrose's. Yep. Straight out of the mouth of Hypoc, the man himself. Uh, all right. So rotations, Pac. They're happening. Um, Ascendance to the north. Cozy to the north. <laughs> uh, looks like Elusive to the north. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. You'd look like an idiot if you said that before this circle happened, right? But, um, I mean, I'm hoping they don't actually cross paths in rotation because that would be the worst thing. When you drive this far out to try and get into that quieter side of the circle and then you run into somebody in rotation anyway, it, it's so disheartening. I mean, ascendants are a lot more split. You can see Cozy mm -hmm. are a lot more grouped. So, if um, I mean, if they trade shots back and forward, Cozy are going to be able to collapse on it very, very quickly and pull up. But uh, I'll hope that... Oh, it looks like they're both going for the western bridge as well towards North Shore. Oh, right up. oh this is, okay. So, an interesting split coming up from Rarity. We haven't seen this in a long time. I mean, this was like the heyday. This is early the bread and PUBG. butter. Yeah, yeah. This is like where you used to go in the circle back in the day. Like hillsides became a lot more popular nowadays, just to kind of defend them out and take some shots. But this is like the tried and true two-two split for we want to harass people that are driving around the fields. Well, this, this was one of the few circles that we would leave before four minutes for, because we would always go to this split. Always. And again, that was just the way the lobby laid out. I think it was always, it was Team Gates back in the day that we used to race to. Um, but uh, it, it, it's such a strong position. Again, it, it gives you really good access to that hill. Every time it pulls towards that hill, uh, just down to the southwest, you have really, really good vision, especially if you can then move up to the barn compound that's just slightly over to the west of where we saw San Diego Realty split. But all right, that Rick. thought, because Liberator pulling up on Pose Don't Snake on Quarry. You wanted to fight us in Primorsk. You ran away. You didn't want to take the fight. Well, Liberate says no. You don't get to get away from it that easy. Very quickly condensing back around two members of Pros Don't Snake, and they hightail it out of there, jumping down the hillsides, making their way back to the other side of Quarry and saying, all right, Liberate, you can have that side. You can have a lot of control based off of that, and there's a lot of vision, but it should be noted Liberate is really like the southernmost team on the entirety of the map right now. Almost every there's a couple of teams there to the east of them, kind of holding down the line, you know, the hillside that we were talking about a second ago. But most of the teams have been opting to play much closer towards north. And there's still one team on military base, but we don't count that either. Um, <laughs> so this is an interesting situation where Liberate's positioning usually gives you a lot of advantage on rotating teams. Now there's just a long range firefight you saw going off into the distance there as the tracers were going off as it's just pros don't snake and liberate just taking a couple of pot shots at each other. It is indeed. I mean, no real reason to kind of overextend in a situation. Oh, I say overextend to really force the issue this oh. early on, but, um, oh, Park, can, can we get the map okay. for a second? I'm seeing, I'm seeing some silliness that's about to happen potentially. So, um, there's one team that's decided to hang out on military base for just a second and is starting to venture their way back over towards that Western bridge. 
at the exact same time that Novo Team Elpix is starting to make a little bit of a push back that direction. So we might have a bridge cluster to go ahead and continue with. With a, it looks like a little bit of an extended bridge camp might be happening on the other side. Long range, to say the least, but could be a problem. Could indeed. I mean, it's definitely one to keep an eye on because the, the timing's perfect. And again, it's yeah. usually if there isn't a camp set up, it, it, it is down to a timing thing. This one actually going to pull all the way back over to the mm. east, Matt. So all mm. those teams that made wide, wide rotations are going to have to pull back Give a it little to me. bit. But um, some teams, you know, that have only just made it into this area of the circle, to be honest with you, uh, are now in kind of really, really powerful positions. Yeah, with this shift over here, you can see that there's still a ton of fields that are in play. That's kind of what Gravity is trying to rotate their way around right now, while No Cap's making a reposition as well. Keck W doing a little bit of a regroup. We still have all players still alive. 64 people alive moving into this circle. So with the fields in play, this many players, this is going to be very difficult. But oddly enough, there are a lot of dips in this position. The problem comes into play back over toward the West, where we have Elusive, Cozy, Ascendance, Orion, Liberate, and Pros Don't Snake, all looking like they're still holding down that corridor and could be very problematic for a lot of these teams. But back over towards the North, you can see it looks like Clueless walking away with a great round one, bumping into No Cap as they're making their rotation. It looks like everything's still kind of calm right now. Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, <laughs> you said we've still got 64 up. This is... Uh... This is rare to say the least. We do have a lot of teams kind of not opting to take fights, so reposition based on that, that well, horrible shift, you got to say. Um, I'm expecting some madness on the west side outside of the circle. Again, I need to stop looking at the map because I can see things I don't want to see right now. Um, oh, I can see all the things that I want to <laughs> see right now. Looks like outside the safe zone, we're having a little bit of a skirmish that's happening as Elusive is trying to drive right by Ascendance. Uh, Rarity has got themselves a nice position that's pretty close towards the center. And there we go. You can see catching some airtime. Gets shot up in oh, the air and collapses my. to his death. Fizzle, what have you done? Early game shenanigans just keep happening to you over and over again. Dude, that's like karma. That's karma for Jay all day dining. That is. One, 100%. You know he's that Jay is just laughing through. right now? Yes, he's driving away with a smile on his face. Well, that's the first section of what we can see is set up. Now Elusive continues on their merry way back down towards the south, where they're going to contest up against where Orion is positioned at here in just a little bit. You can see that their marker's way off in the distance. Very similar color. A couple of shots going to start connecting with them. Elpix looks like they're bumping into a little bit of a situation that's happening back over here as Monkey Business was holding down position right over looking towards the bridge. Remember that Elpix was our Novo team. So one of their members did manage to make it over. I think maybe two. It's hard to see with the amount. Uh, yeah, just one back over here. But the others are starting to cross the bridge right now. So Monster could provide a little bit of a distraction for his teammates to provide them some form of safety to make the cross. I mean, this is a, an interesting part oh, of the no. map to be caught up with. No, Boom. no, dude. Boom. With style. Number one, Tater, you're number one in my heart for sure. Every time you run over somebody, it makes me happy. It doesn't. And again, it's elusive. It's elusive yeah. involved in the <laughs> in the vehicle madness once again. I mean, hopefully that trend changes for them. This yeah. is the again, this is what we were just talking about a minute ago. This now is a really, really good position to be in because because of so much of the south side of the circle is cut out. Matt fighting for gas station down here. Um, it does give you a really good opportunity to kind of make you know those small moves if if the circle does shift and give you an edge. Uh, on maybe the, the hills we were talking about in the early game. It, it could hey, be Ascendance. a really good... There you go. Look at that, Matt. That's going to be perfect <laughs> now. Yeah, Monster last member up for his team for Elpix, but Ascendance just going to go ahead and say, hey, we saw you guys driving over here a second ago. How'd everything turn out for you? A ton of bullets starting to come back over this direction as Elusive is taking the shots, as well as Orion. Ascendance just going to go ahead and continue to gun it past Pros Don't Snake, who aren't playing in a position to take shots from the top of Quarry, but are going to be running right over here next to Virtue. Instead, going to give it a little bit of a breathing room, run back over towards those hills. But guess what? That's where Liberate's going to be posted up at. When there's 59 people alive, there is nowhere easy to make a rotation into. But man, Ascendance is finding the path. Somehow, looks like Guabi might have the angle to play. Going to go ahead and continue running through. Keck W now, next one in the line, and Ascendance... How are they getting away with this high park? I don't know. I mean, send by name, send by nature. But I'm surprised, actually, They've they haven't been punished like more. Than, yeah, literally four or five teams 
to get to where they're going. And I mean, they're, they're still going to, they're going to have to keep driving, Matt. There's not really anything open for them to go to. Maggi down to like 15 HP, Bex down at half HP, Raven following up in the rear now. But I mean, where do you stop now? Apparently it looks like Rarity's shack. And how well is this going to pay off? Nope. A couple of shots come out and they say, never mind, we're not going that way either. As uh, the Benny Hill music continues to play in my head, as Ascendance is going to say, no, <laughs> let's go ahead and go back this direction where we're going to see Clueless oh, is going to be holding up. And now Stop. getting a couple of shots <laughs> coming this direction. Stop. Beck says, no, I don't like that. Maji says, well, I see why you don't like it as he gets shot. And that's going to be a little bit problematic for Zraven, but I think that they're finally going to find themselves a place to call home <laughs> inside of this split shack setup. The longest rotation I've ever seen in any phase three ever. I mean, they, they, that was probably at hey, least they, a good they, three kilometers. I think they kept 75% the of their team up. It's fine. I'm all for it. I'm, I'm still amazed by that. Only losing one inside of that rotation is absolutely nuts. The fact that we still have 55 people alive in this hypoc is blowing my mind. I mean, there's, there's still a lot, there's still a lot of teams out to the West side here. And again, I don't think everyone's going to settle for this edge. You see elusive trying to find their ways into the barn, but they're going to have to wrap North now towards chopsticks. Maybe take up into the compound on the South side of chopsticks. Maybe just see this next circle out. But I mean, for this many teams, uh, sorry, this many players still alive, there's so few options if you're not already in this circle. I love this idea. Just stop. There's a little bit of a dip. It should be good enough for now. And I think that's what a lot of the teams are just trying to make do with. Just good enough for now. Monster, the last one up for his team. Looking back over at Monkey Business in the distance, is going to be rotating through. Zovran, kind of playing in the middle area as Gravity finds themselves in an awkward situation as well. Trying to figure out how they're going to handle this, but... We'll kind of see how this is all going to have to post up as so many teams just have unruly neighbors right next to their position. Yeah, I'm going to see this one pop again. It's actually, again, it's going to cut out like six or seven teams there on the outside of this circle. Again, eyes go back towards the west side. Pros don't snake virtue. they got to make moves. Uh, I mean, once we know that it comes towards this field, Matt, like there's what five or six shacks i think two of them are destructible so again so few options if you haven't already found your way into this circle yeah and this is gonna be real rough there's so many fields like okay the moral of the story so far is fields are bad and it looks like pros don't snake gonna go ahead and send it back over next to where winnie's holding down position at the shack a couple of shots gonna go ahead and dissuade them off to the side of that Keck W also has a couple of players hitting back from the distance who are inside the safe zone. Two different points. Pros Don't Snake is going to find themselves in a point where they just have to snake. There's no way around it. But early movements are at least going to get them in this position early. So, well, that's a say the least. The reason that that's important <laughs> is the fact that there's going to be multiple teams with no territory to work yes. with. They're going to have to yes. cut their path along in this. We did see Ascendants who found themselves in an awkward situation now making push back over towards Clueless on that high ground fight you can see kind of going on. But it's going to be also long range shots coming in from, I believe, play for fun. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest problem here, nail on the head, Matt, if you don't make moves early, it leaves it worse and worse. Actually, NHS can't find the damage, cool. but he does actually find the knock ons as Raven down to 7 HP. Got to stick the first aid kit behind the shack. The rest of Clue is not really in a position to convert that damage done just yet. Magi on the outside Ooh, of the shack. Is he going to go? For, is he going to go for the res here? NHS has only got 11 bullets. He's got to be Ooh. careful where Magi swings out the door and we'll find NHS. Nice shots coming out from that. Maji should be able to get the res. Uh, the issue is going to be no cap that's back behind this, but the other two members of Clueless that are playing the high ground looking over this are kind of caught up into a fight with them. And that's kind of the moral of the story for everywhere in the circle is multi-fronted fights are happening all over the place. One of the few teams that are not finding themselves in a difficult spot is going to be Liberate, so good sign for all those fans out there. No cap looking like they're going to go ahead and play back down this hillside. Looking back around where we saw Elusive playing a second ago, Elusive's going to go ahead and get a nice angled play from the shots. Get down onto one. Why are you so ugly? Still up and alive, though. Good shot, still connecting, just narrowly surviving off this one. Finally going to get taken down. He's going to be able to pick up a little bit, but Sneak Attack gets dropped from the side of this as the other members from No Cap going to find an angle to play with. It's going to be Plube and Adit who are still continuing to harass off the point. But now realizing, okay, we don't know how many members are back over onto this angle, so going to have to retreat just a little bit more, and that means the fact that a little bit more problem is going to be happening for both Clueless and Elusive both as both these teams trying to figure out how they're going to make a little bit of a safety play and get into position. 
I mean, they can play around. Oh, we just actually lost this tire, unfortunately, from distance. That's gravity sending shots all the way down from the southeast side of the circle. Actually, beyond the Supremacy's compound. Oh, my God. D-Rich actually lands that shot. And it will fall in the open here. Plube, he's got a body block if he wants to get that one. But it's actually Supremacy that steal that one away. Just to let you wow, guys know, that's... gravity is all the way across the circle. <laughs> like a good 800 meters away from that. That was a phenomenal shot coming up from them. D Rich and the rest of the crew on gravity are just continuing to harass. No cap off on the point of this. Clueless is going to flank in right back behind J all day. He's going to plot back down, but it's just going to be a matter of time before he gets spotted. Spray is going to come through. Hambino is going to connect onto this one. Nick 101 goes down. Hambino, the last one up for his squad, running right along next to the blue. Should be able to find himself a spot, but just narrowly gets nicked and gets taken down. Continue oh. the shots. Got to be coming off into the distance. So now Ascendance. Being last team up over next to the north, Dude. do you have their safety player that kind of give them a little bit of spot to play? Hambino actually found that kill from the grave. He threw the frag just before he died, and Plube couldn't get away from it in time. So, Clueless will put a second kill point on the board. Obviously, no placement points at this point. Everyone out on the north side will die. Ascendants, actually the ones that survive um, after that 12-minute rotation in, in Phase 3. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Bex I actually made it inside the circle now. He has control of it. I think the little... Is that the shack down just on the... I think it is the shack on the north side. I'm pretty sure it is. But Maggie and Draven need to come and regroup with them. To be honest with you. They need to find another option to kind of hold onto an edge here. Okay, so a lot of fields. No surprise. It's kind of what we're over saying right now. We still have the hillside that was in play. There's also the complex that Supremacy is holding down. And you can kind of see where there's a lot of little interesting things that are happening as monkey business looks like they were trying to maybe vie up next to where Liberate was at and realize the fact that they don't really want to play that way, but instead got to run right into a rotating gravity. And that could be a little bit problematic as gravity is just going to continue to run right up and gatekeep them out. Two of their members just roll right over here next to this shack instantly oh pop out, start taking some shots. Good connections coming up from band kill, but has to retreat due to taking a lot of loss in life. But now you can see Monkey Business in a very difficult spot. Those shots are going to reveal position. And now Liberate starting to move into a different point to flank from two different sides. These are our strong teams right now. You know, the ones that had multiple members still up. All the rest of them that are kind of playing in the fields are very damaged from this point. Let's see, Monkey Business trying to figure out, okay, can we go back over for the res? You might be able to get it, but the zone's coming in. This is going to be kind of problematic even just to get back yeah. out from this point. And actually, Halos Empire and Baja are actually going to look for angles onto that Dacia where they did go for the Reds. Ice Tech actually going to find Zovran. That's gravity further back on the extremity. You can see now some utility coming down. D Rich, <laughs> I mean, D Rich needs to be making moves in at some point here, but uh, Monkey Business are actually getting in between the split of gravity here, Matt. This could be absolutely disastrous for them. Yeah, this is uh, this is turning into a little bit of a mess. The other two members of Gravity still playing back behind this might be having that pincer position. Pankill still just trying to survive out based off of point. Keep in mind, Supremacy is playing back over towards the north of this, but in a perfectly safe complex. But with all of this side skirmishing that's going on, everybody's playing right along the edge of the blue, and it feels like the blue is doing more damage to Gravity than anybody else at this time. Lipson's in a safe point, but Pankill's taking a lot. D-Rich has now gone down, trying to get a couple more shots into the backside of Monkey Business. Can't quite connect with enough to do any work to it. Finally starting to connect. Maybe going to get it down, and no, going to go ahead and get a quick spin back around. Get taken down, and Gravity is now out. A lot of damage been done back over towards Monkey Business, and Ice Tech looks like he's been listening to what's been going on. Him and Guabi now starting to look back over towards the angle that Monkey Business is playing. It looks like they're just going to run back down as the circle continues to make its way back over towards the field. Well, Ice Tech actually with the jump spot. I think he just spotted him on the tree there. Going to go for the flush, steal that way. away. It's actually Femme Fatale that got that knock, but one member of Monkey Business will survive. So he gribbles. Femme Fatale now getting the knock on to Guabi. So you see that angle really, really good for Supremacy from the combat. That molly is roll. perfect. Yes. Baja actually finds it with the barrel. The monkey business will go out in eighth place. So first placement point being awarded. Liberate now have a huge task ahead of them to get down onto the, I guess, the south side of the circle, but the north side of that hill. It all slopes down from where they're coming from. And here's the problem. Supremacy knows that they don't have any territory that they can easily claim. Their complex is not inside the safe zone. So instead, they're kind of harassing back over towards Liberate. The longer they stay here, the more difficult it's going to make it for Liberate to try to find some type of angle to play with. Just to give you an idea, these are, again, our strong teams based off of the number of players that are left. Seven teams, 22 alive. 
but it's just a scattering of damaged teams that are kind of hanging out in all of the other positions. It looks like Supremacy finally says, okay, that's it. We've got the vehicles. We think that we have the idea on how we're wanting to do this. They're just going to roll up right next to a hay bale. Hey, if it's cover, it works at this stage. Even vehicles can make do. But oddly enough, it's going to be Cozy who kind of focuses its attention back over down towards Liberate that's going to kind of stall them out. We have a lot of little small skirmishes that are happening as well as Ascendants looking like they're trying to make their way inside the zone but don't really have the angles to work with as well as Rarity back over towards the north. And this is providing the opportunity for Supremacy to maybe find some type of little small pigeonholes that they can play inside of. The other two members have yet to make their move and finally going, okay, it looks like this is the green light. They're starting to make some type of little juke back over into this position. But all of these distracting fights are going to allow them to sneak into a point. Yeah, I see Supremacy spreading out. They look like they're going to try and challenge SDR on the north side. You see, Honey actually pulling up Deadeye on the back side of a hay bale. Excellent. Actually going to get open shots on, but Liberate, meanwhile, there you go. This is what I was talking about here. Deadeye over up on the north side here, and actually, yeah, going to be found out. San Diego Rarity will fall in sixth place. That gives a lot of space over to Supremacy, Matt. Yeah, there's a lot of a mess that's going on right now. Ice Tech trying to make his way back over next to Vexel, who's been just continuing harassing his team. Steps down, gets in a little bit of damage, but it's going to be Vexel who continues to pop off for Cozy until he gets spotted out from a different angle. And that's going to be the name of the game for quite a while, as everybody to the south is kind of dead from this point. It's just our northern teams kind of posting up in position. So we've got Supremacy that's running a 2-2 split with nice angles to work with. Maji last went up by himself from this point forward. It looks like two members of Cozy right in the middle of the circle. And the circle's going to shift back down oh towards God. the south. Only the two members of Cozy are in any type of position to be safe. So now it's going to be about these repositions and who gets shot on the way that they're trying to make some type of approach. The members and the shot angles really do favor supremacy from this point, as well as still having fairly safe vehicles, even if they don't all have tires. Meanwhile, on the other side of this, Keck W has been kind of quiet after harassing a lot of teams, but still have multiple members up as well. Yeah, and the, the difficult thing is Cozy's door on that shack faces south, so it makes it really difficult for them to swing out, get some active angles yeah. to stop any of this reposition inside the circle here. You see Supremacy send them one down to the east side. That's a good foothold to get inside this next circle, but Keck W are going to have to come down towards the south side, which does open the opportunity for Cozy to do some damage. Keck W is citing the fact that they're going to do a sweep back down around the south. Looking like there's a couple of shots that are going to be coming out from Supremacy, but... Again, the longer that Supremacy holds this angle, if they don't get kills, they're just putting themselves in a very contended point to where they're just going to risk their own death whenever they have to move and everybody's already posted up. They're going to go ahead and say, okay, yeah, it's getting a little bit too risky. And they just kind of like fast and the furious their way back down through this. And they've just been kind of using these vehicles to kind of roam around uncontested right now just due to the nature of the beast and what's going on. And they know where Maji is at. Got to quickly spin back around. Fim Fatal hits the shots on him to take him out. And so now it's starting to l really look like we've got a nice setup of Supremacy on one side, Cozy in the middle, and Keck W <laughs> on the other side. Yeah, of course, they are named Cozy because that's the situation right now. I mean, they, they really just need to bank on Keck W and Supremacy kind of getting into it before this circle closes in. Again, you got to argue if this one does center up. I mean, Supremacy are going to have to move a little bit. Cozy are going to have to come out of the shack. Keck W probably going to have the best position if that's the scenario we're going to see, Matt. I don't know if Supremacy has the best vision, just due to kind of like the way that all these trees are kind of lined up. You can see it took a long time before they spotted out Winnie. And it feels like really that Keck W is doing a good job on just getting control over like sight lines that Supremacy is set up in. Oddly enough, well, I guess not too odd. Cozy is just kind of sitting back, relaxing right now. Firmly content and very aware that there are teams around them, but much like you were talking about a second ago, Hypoc, they don't really have a lot of options to play around. That Molotov, did that connect inside there? I can't tell. It does look like it does connect and gets a lot of damage off. Good play coming out from Keck W. Just going to go ahead and Molotov one, and as the other one runs out, pick them up, and that puts us in a firm 4v4 situation with a little bit of favoring of position showing back over towards Keck W right now. They have two of their members. You know, I mean, both teams have like one or two members inside of position, but it looks like majority of the Supremacy team is going to have to move with three coming in where there's already two for Keck W. Indeed, and already up to nine kills now. When are you actually going to get the first knock here? So Supremacy will fall to three unless they can get that res. Again, this stage of the game, very, very difficult to do so. You can see Femme Fatale trying to hold on to this position, maybe get some 
damage in before the circle starts pushing them. But uh, I mean, this one moves quick, Matt. You you can't afford to play anchor with your back to the blue of this situation. And it's too risky to send somebody over to go for the res and just limit another person out of the potential firefight or vision that needs to be coming into play. Tomas coming up for W slowly creeping their way no forward. Way. Still just trying to lean back into the vehicles. You can see Supremacy <clears throat> trying to make some type of play, but good shot's going to come out from Relative to go ahead and connect on that one. Reckonar now going to go ahead and reposition back over towards the south. But do you know where we can see Simply oh Matt my. and coming through off of this, good connection shots coming out of that. There's going to be a little bit of an angled play, and I don't know if that grenade is going to be in range. When he goes down on the outside of this, that's going to make it a little bit more complicated for Keck W as they do manage to get the shots back over there. But you can see now starting to get a little bit of a firing line we can see that the setup coming in is very focused back over towards Winnie's position and going for this res right now is not the time to do it. That allowed Winnie to be a little bit more aggressive, but does end up biting it. Fin Fatale, the last one up for his team, just trying to survive on top of this, but it's going to be Tomas that's just raining in damage safely from position. 13 kills coming up for the Keck W Kears. Yeah, really, really good end game control demonstrated by Keck W there. Uh, I mean, again, as soon as that one pulls to the south away from the shack, you got to argue Keck W have got the best position to kind of just sit there and play time uh, and kind of wait for a team to not necessarily slip up, but have to move into the open. Um, the win condition there for Supremacy was getting as much damage as possible before that phase eight closed, and they just didn't manage to do it. See, I thought that based off of Supremacy set up there for a second, where they repositioned, realizing the fact that Winnie was the threat and the problem might deny the reposition angles coming out as we saw Keck W trying to make their push forward. But instead, just great shots from the rest of the team coming up from Keck W is going to go ahead and connect onto them and then opting to go for that res right then just denied so much vision on the push coming out from the two players from Keck W to get in throwable range, get in close range, hit the shots and really just tie this one down really quickly. Yeah, no, just really, really good. And again, another good field ending. We, we love to see him, Matt, right? Yay. I love field ending so much. But. Big shout out to Winnie coming up for Keck W Kears, walking away with seven kills as well as to Moss. Big performance coming out of them. And I mean, this is a, this has got a lot of, I guess, newer players inside of here. Like I'm for, a lot of people probably familiar with simply Matt. He's played in several different things, but uh, a lot of, I guess, players that we haven't had a chance to really watch a lot of. So really exciting to see them step up at this time. But we're going to go ahead and throw it back over to the analyst desk. We're not guys. We got a ton of PUBG still coming. So make sure you guys stay tuned in. Thank you very much, Matram, and that is game two in the books. Yet again, another field ending. I'm sure the boys loved it. I think I may have caught a little bit of sarcasm in their tone. Clover, what did you think about the field ending? Yeah, we've been seeing this circle pretty frequently through a lot of these, you know, both PCS3 group stages and challengers, and it is brutal, especially if we're not having a lot of places to play from. So, I, you know what? I could definitely feel it. I wouldn't want to play from that either. Well, at the end, it was Keck W. Kears versus Supremacy, and Keck W. Kears come out on top. Let's take a look at our highlights. 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 We got them. We dude, got them. This was. Uh, Gosby, I know. Oh, no. That was out of control, <laughs> dude. That was. Uh. I love to see it. That was absolutely crazy. This this actually confused me because I don't know where the rest of Clueless was. I, I thought for sure they were going to come out and help uh, NHS, but they didn't. Seems like uh, we've been seeing this a lot lately of, of solo players in North America making plays. We've got a lot of Valiates. A lot Ooh. of Valiates out there. Okay. Uh, but uh, there the you go, Liberate. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're from the hills. Find the final Molotov there on Monkey Business. And as we said, it did come down to Supremacy and Keck W. Kears. Godspeed, I know you had a, a, a lot of nice things to say about how Supremacy and Keck W both played this final circle here in the field. Yeah, I was actually really impressed with um, the way both of those teams just handled that situation because obviously Clover said it and we can see it playing those those circles are very difficult, especially when they're in the field. There's not a lot of cover. You have to either use hay barrels or vehicles or whatever. But uh, even though, you know, the Supremacy had the compound, I was actually talking to Cam about this, um, he pointed out that even though they also had the compound, the way that they came out was really great. They tried to basically enforce their will on their circle. They cleaned out their edge. At the same time, Keck W cleared out their edge, and then both teams kind of met after they destroyed everyone in the middle. So it was just really good uh, on both teams for being proactive. So just uh, good movement all the way around, good map control 
all the way around from uh, some of our challenger squads. Clover, I know we talked about Keck W. We talked about Supremacy coming into today as uh, as being a couple of those teams that really kind of feast on kills to get the majority of their points. Is this the kind of the Keck W and Supremacy that you were expecting to see here today? This is definitely that. This is showing, you know, their comfort in playing these types of situations. Additionally as well, I mean, Cozy Crew was also up there in the top mm. three, uh, top four. And, you know, these teams kind of played this very well. Obviously, you know, Liberate and Supremacy had really great, strong positions until that circle shifted away and we had... You know, at phase six, a field, an open field with not really much to open play from. Field. And as Godsuit said, you know, Supremacy, they sent Honey Hooney up to the north, completely obliterating San Diego Rarity and gave him a really comfortable position to sit from. Additionally, as Keck W. Kears cleared out the west side and were able to kind of take care of Liberate and, and move forward. So uh, strong positionings for these teams, but it's kind of, I think, as well, a factor in their ability to keep all four players up late uh, through that late game. So I'm really, really ecstatic to see this from these squads. Well, we are waiting on our leaderboards to get updated right now. But Godspeed, if yep. you're a team that kind of relies on getting those kills, how important is it to get that first game under your belt where you uh, kind of produce a bunch of those uh, kills? You just kind of produce. Um, you just kind of produce kind of dead produce. bodies <laughs> all around you. No, That's it's, what you're producing. It's huge. It's absolutely huge to get your confidence going early because once you do that, then you can start making the players the calls that you, you, know, you would normally make without any hesitation. And I think... Um, that's one of the biggest things when we see a lot of these teams kind of avoid fights, especially on the edge, which is where you should be the most active. Um, mm -hmm. So having having a good start is is very important. And um, sometimes we see teams that don't really get that start. And I'm going to be honest, we were talking about it. You, you told me you're going to ask about it here on the desk. Elusive is definitely one of those teams. These guys um, have been struggling for for quite a while now, and I don't I don't even know what to do to fix that team anymore. You have any ideas, Clover? What do we do to In fix Elusive? <laughs> oh. Putting you on the spot right now. Make your <laughs> roster decisions. Let's go. Who are we you dropping? Who are we kicking? I, I, it's, it's hard to say. I think the big issue for Elusive right now seems to be cohesion and communication. Almost yeah. like they're kind of being pulled in different directions. They can't fully commit to one idea. And, you know, you can see the frazzle kind of coming out. And that's something that they really need to work on. I'm not sure who it is that's making those shot calls if somebody absolutely is on this roster. But obviously something needs to change just a little bit. Obviously... Things aren't working so well through at least what? the first two. Games. Sorry, Poro. What would yeah. you do to fix it? What would stuff? I do? Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you're over there answering, asking all the questions, man. Okay. Burn the whole thing to the ground. <laughs> oh Jesus! Just <laughs> set it on fire. Leave it out by the trash bins. It's I... over. It's done. You got great players on that team, but the roster itself doesn't appear to be working anymore. Maybe it's time to uh, to look at switching things up a little bit. And hey, you know, like, hey, we you try to old yeller a loose. <laughs> <laughs> Take elusive out to a nice uh, farm. Jesus. Look, I I'm sorry, you were a good boy. I hope elusive shuts all of us up and pulls oh, us yeah. through, but I just I don't see it. I'm sorry. They have they've been struggling for a while now. Well, you know, and, and that kind of goes back to something that we talk about a lot, right? And that's uh, when is it the right time? to yeah. stick with a roster and try to try to get through the humps and the ups and the downs and, and fight through the downs to get back to the ups. Uh, and when is it time to just say, you know what, we've probably seen the ceiling of what we're capable as, as a, as a four man, maybe it's time to, to make some changes. I don't have the answers to that. I don't think anybody yeah. really has the answers to that outside of the teams. Let's take a look at the leaderboards right now. Look at that last game. Keck W. Kears with the 23 big points. Supremacy coming points. in second with 12. I know we've been getting some big points, at least through the, the first two games. Good 20-plus off, uh, off of the wins here. Uh, but yet again, a couple of teams with uh, a couple of zero-point performances there. And Orion, I think that's the uh, one. We're on the day. Yeah, uh, that's... Two points on the day. Uh, you know, one two. for this match, one for the previous, both in kills. So they're... You know, the thing we talked about, their ability to make it up through the late game seems like it's just something that they're struggling through in this lobby right now. But a, a couple of teams went out early as well. Clueless went out with only two kills and no placement points that match. After getting the yeah. win, that's uh, not probably what they were expecting. But, you know, different circles, different people. Let's take a look at the kills and damage. Winnie! 
I said maybe, uh, maybe rem- I thought that maybe removing the pew pew from the last uh, from his name might have been a bad decision, but it looks like it's working out pretty well for him. Godspeed. It's clearly the right decision. And then Maji as well, you know, had a, a really nice game. Obviously, that defense against Clueless, um, a player that you actually had hyped up. You, you said that you had hyped him up. I have. Uh, maybe you I cursed have. him, but <laughs> we'll never know. Uh, also, Tomas, yeah, Keck W. Uh, Kears were, were out of control good, I think, in that match as well. We also saw a lot from um, Supremacy as well and a little bit from uh, Liberate. So not bad as we see the total scores here. Well, there you go. Through two games, Keck W. Kears, Team Clueless right up there at the top. Liberate, no chicken dinners, but they're right behind Clueless in third place. As you said, still managing to find placement, still managing to find kills. Our only double-digit uh Kill, well, the top three there are only double digits in kills so far, at least, uh, through two. Any sh- any surprises here on the board for you, Clover, through two on Erangel? Uh, You know what? I- I'm actually just kind of, I think, a little disappointed in a couple of teams right now that obviously are struggling out the bat. But for a surprise, you know, Supremacy. I kind of joked about this once. Supremacy has a really good way of putting down kills and mm. not getting chicken dinners and yet again we're finding them uh, going out in second place so that that meme is continuing on even through challengers cup there you go overall kills and damage leader nitrogen in first right now but it is a four-way tie between winnie ice tech Sheru, and nitro over there on the right side there Sheru though fully in control of that number one spot in damage and it's been a while been a while since we've seen a team clueless member up there but uh you know even throughout pcs3 godspeed i think we we can both agree that sheru is looking like he was improving yeah well i mean i don't i'm not sure if it's so much improving or if it's just him kind of getting his groove back so to speak because i'm fair enough he, it, it's been a while since we've seen Shrew in competitive play at the very least and to see him return i mean that was he's obviously been one of the players that i've been really excited to talk about um and that's just because i knew how ridiculous he was uh, even back in like the united days back in the mpl so yeah. i wouldn't be surprised if um I wouldn't be surprised if Shrew honestly just made it to the top of this of the list, both in kills and damage. Basically, he would be like the the Luke twelve of the challengers lobby, if you will. Ooh, you like that. See what I, I did there. I praise. Yeah. I praise. Well, uh, guys, we got a report that we are waiting on a player to get back into lobby after uh, their system crash. So we're going to be filling just a little bit longer. I know. We know how much. Oh, they love you it. Love yeah. you. Love sitting here uh and listen to uh, listening to us talk let's see if i can figure figure out another team to uh to completely throw out in the garbage <laughs> while we're doing this but uh Jesus. clover uh <laughs> you throw all the toxicity to me today that's exactly you're just that's, trying to get me to, to I, hate on that's, that. not no, that's not true that's not I, I, true i i took it squarely on the shoulders i'll have you know i'm just trying to throw it to you before i uh i, th- I throw it uh, some more toxic toxicity out there and uh, and get the entire chat to hate me before I say something like Hambino needs to be cut from Clueless or something Whoa. that will get me Ooh. just completely, First of all, completely out taken out fam. back. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, whatever, Ham fam. <laughs> You're just jealous you can't pull off a name like Hambino to be completely yeah. honest. Uh, that's probably fair. That's probably fair. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, so, okay, we got two games down on Miramar. Mm-hmm. What, uh, I know you guys did a little bit of review, uh, and I'm not sure how, how in-depth you got, but uh, are we looking at any particular teams as we head into our final game on Erangel here before we switch over to Miramar? And obviously we'll touch a little bit on this next break, but uh, who are you kind of looking at maybe to to get something done here in the final game on Erangel before we move over to Miramar? Who do you, is there any team that sticks out to you as a team that kind of, looks to Aaron go for most of their points and yeah. should probably show up here in this last game before we switch Clover liberate liberate really struggled on Miramar during PCS three group stages. That was not a place where they, you know, were able to really accomplish much of anything. And even when I kind of think back to the very final day of PCS three group stages, that was kind of apparent that that was a place they were putting down uh, quite a bit of donuts. So I'd like to see Aaron, you know, Aaron Gell uh, be a good place for them to, and I take a bit of a lead before going into Miramar. Godspeed, anybody sticking out to you? Um, I was actually going to say Liberate as well, but also as well. I, I feel like um, I don't know what's going on with Orion. I mean, the first game I kind of just was like, okay, you know, it's just the first game, no big deal. But, I mean, that's two games back-to-back with only one point each. 
Um, I'm just hoping it's not really too late for them. And and historically, I'm pretty sure Orion's been good on a wrangle. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what's going on with that team. Maybe just a little bit of a slow start. Now, obviously, we still have plenty of time, right? You know, still that's, 10 more games. That's the thing is plenty. Like, I can tell you from experience how you know, not doing well in one or two games cost us a series. Um, and that's that's the True. thing that I'm worried about for Orion is two back-to-back bad games. Okay, can they pick it up? Can they continue to kind of grind some points out the next few games? Or is that kind of going to be it for them? I really hope not. I'm rooting for this team 100%. But mm-hmm. so far, it's been really rough the first two games for them. Well, Clover, I know going back to Challenger Cup, we saw how, or not Challenger Cup, but rather the round of 16, how close everything was there towards the end. Do you think that Orion, come this time tomorrow, might be looking at these two games and and maybe having some regrets and thinking that, oh man, if we could have gotten just one or two more kills, I, I, do we think this is going to be a very close lobby towards the end? Based off I, of what I think there's a so lot far? of potential. I mean, even talk about Keck W. Kears, right? Putting down a 26 point game to throw them uh, as far ahead of the leaderboard as they are after being in kind of near the dead last, obviously with two games, it's, it's kind of a bit skewed in terms of points and stats right now for sure. both of these, uh, yeah. you know, kind of teams coming in from each of these series. But, at the same time, I do think that the the mental part of it, right? If Orion goes out early again, they're definitely going to get stuck in their heads. And that is the worst thing that they could have happen to them right now. So if you're Orion, shake it off. Bad games happen. These were some really weird open circles with a lot of open rotations that were taking them out early. And that's going to be hard enough for any team. Uh, I, don't I, just, weird, yeah, I don't know how weird these circles were, though. That's that's the thing. Yeah. It's like I... You know, they they we're we're talking about some some pretty, I mean, cut and dry stuff. I would think. I'm, I've got uh, the endings. My... No, I'll give you that a hundred percent. I think the endings were a little Field weird endings, and awkward. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, the circles before that. I mean, those are the ones that Orion struggled. It wasn't really like they just died in the last circle. Sure. I mean, they were they were falling off and you know circled one, two, three, and four like the earlier circles. So, um, to be completely honest, I just think Orion just needs one really good team fight where they actually get a nice little wipe, get some confidence going, get the ball rolling, because we know that's a good team. I mean, that oh, I, yeah. I truly believe that Orion is a good team. It's just they are they're struggling. You know, out the gate they haven't had the best games. And I think, you know, although that might affect their their confidence a little bit. Um, they just need to reset, as Clover said, have a nice game, get a good team fight in, and then I think uh, we'll see the Orion we expect after that. Is that all it takes? Just one team fight? Sometimes. Sometimes it takes one team fight or like a really nice little circle love. And uh, it's just, it's like a sigh of relief, man. I'm telling you, in some of those comp games, even just getting the edge of a circle is like, thank God we don't have to move anymore because some mm. teams go through it. I mean, I know STK has been in that position before where they just have a, a whole day where they just don't get any circles and they're just constantly fighting for every position they have. Sometimes, again, winning a team fight or just getting that one circle is, is like a it's a breather. You know, it gives you a chance mm-hmm. to to reset and figure out what you're going to do in the next circle. The other thing is I just think every team in this lobby needs to be way more proactive aside from the ones that have been, um, which is really just sure. a few. Well, and, you know, you talk about SDK, right, and having those bad types of days at the very beginning of today, Pora, you said about, uh, you know, having six games today, only two days, you know, for 12 in a total series, if this is going to be a big adjustment for some of these teams. And I think that, they, you know, that does bring a really solid point. There's only 12 matches. There's only two days. You can have a bad day, but one bad day is half the games. And yeah coming back from that mentally, it's really rough. You can't have it like you do with the PCS three group stages where you've got three weekends, six total days, you know, you can have a bad day and still have five good ones. So uh, for all those teams right now that are struggling with only two games in, you just got to shake it off and pull in the points that you can moving forward. Well, guys, uh, I I think I've come up with as much stuff as I can talk about. (laughs) I know we we were trying to keep this game from starting because we want to make sure that we uh, say as much as we can, uh, everything that's on our minds, and I think we're pretty much spent at this point. So, guys, we're going to throw it into game number three now with your casters, Matram and Hypot. Guys, take it away. (laughs) 